number two. So practice number two. Practice number two, introduction to Atlas TI. What are we going to see in this practice? As I told you, uh, our, well, this is not going to be seen in, in, in the video because it, it's not working, but what are we going to do in this semester? We are going to do a qualitative marketing research to understand the uh, perceived, uh, sorry, the customer experience and the by using the customer journey in different companies. Some of you have chosen thematic parks, others restaurants, hotels, whatever, specific companies. So we are going to try to analyze in a qualitative way uh, the experience of the individuals. And we are going to use to process this information a qualitative software. In this call, in this case called Atlas TI. This is going to be a software, uh, from my point of view, the software is easy compared to other softwares. If we are doing, if we were doing a quantitative analysis, the software for quantitative analysis are more difficult in general, more technically more difficult. In this case, Atlas TI is easy. It's an easy software. But the problem when we are dealing with qualitative exploratory studies is doing the, the rest of the study. This is why I told you practice one was so important. In practice number one, we were planning a qualitative study, planning. That is thinking about our company, uh, thinking about the different questions that we were going to include in the script. And these questions that were going to be included in the script were related to the product, to the service, sorry, we are going to analyze. They are going to be different if we are talking about a thematic park than if we are talking about a restaurant or any kind of any other company. So at the end of practice number one, what we did was to construct uh, or to design the study, the qualitative study, and to construct a script. This script allows, allowed us to uh, interview individuals in that interview to find a person that visited that part, thematic park and to ask him or her about his or her experience. Uh, we recorded this in-depth interview, or we can do the same in groups, in a focus group. We recorded this interview and we transcribed this interview. This was the end of practice number one. And these transcriptions, we can think about the interview we do to the first person, the interview to the second person, and for example, the focus group to the first group. These elements that we have here are basically transcriptions. I'm going to show you one for you to have an idea if it works, of course. Here we have, it's in Spanish, but we are not going to read it. It's just a transcription. This is one is in Spanish. But the transcription basically is an interview I did to a manager of a real hotel and where I can find the question. Me podría describir in Spanish, with no problem. Basically, the question and the answer. The question and the answer. And this is how it works, an interview. We gather all the information from individuals. This is what this document this interview is called, or we are going to call this interview, sorry, pantalla complete. This document is going to call, be called primary document. So what we are going to analyze with our software are primary documents. What I'm going to do is, okay, I have the interview uh, to the first person. That is a man, of 25 years old, uh, Spanish that have visited the thematic park five times. I have this interview and I can upload this interview to the software. We are going to see later how to do that. And I'm going to have more. We are still thinking about the number we are going to require you to do in this subject, but probably there are going to be two in the interviews and one focus group of one, two, three, and four people. In the Spanish group, we are going to 
uh, put more people in the focus group because they are one more member. But in the English group, it's okay. So you are going to have this. Once you have the two interviews and the focus group, you can upload these the files to the program. And once we have the files in the program, what we do is to analyze different tools. <coughs> so there is going to be one practical session called textual analysis, uh, another one conceptual analysis, um, <clears throat> organizational analysis, Etc. There are more analysis. So the pro the software is going to be very easy. What is going to be basic for you to do a good job? This part. To design, to think about your hotel, your restaurant, your the company you want to assess, write a proper script. So whenever you finish practice number one and you submit practice number one. I'm going to give you feedback of your script. Not before. Whenever you submit, I'm going to tell you, your script is okay in these parts, could be improved in this way, in these parts. So with the new version of the script, you are going to do this, this, and this. With the new version. If you do, one second. If you do a good job in this part, and also if the interviews are well organized, and you gather in, in, in information enough, these practical, these practical sessions are going to be very easy. If your script is messy, is not clear, has no objective, no structure, you are going to have problems in this practice. So this is the thing. All the different practical sessions are connected and you need to do a good job in the previous one in order to do. Another important thing, this, Data gathering, as soon as you, you submit a, a, a practice number one, I'm going to spend the next day giving you feedback. That means that in one day, you can start gathering this information or two days in that week. Some groups do their job fast and they have both interviews and the focus group soon. One week, 10 days, two weeks. If you do so, what well, you're going to do are the, the, the following practice with all your information, putting all the information. There are some groups that work the minimum, that does, doesn't want to work at, until the end of the semester. That means, imagine, they only have one interview. It takes time for them to gather the information, one interview. And they do practice textual uh, analysis with one interview, it can be done. Conceptual analysis one, one, with one interview could be done, and organizational analysis, one interview. But to pass, you need at least these three things. What means that maybe at the end of the semester in May, when you have the new information, you need to do everything again. You need to do again these, all these practices. So it's, it's very wise, it could be wise from you to gather the information as soon as possible, and to do things only one time. You can do whatever you want, but you can do it right at the beginning. That means that in May, you can rest because most is going to be done and you can focus on your other exams because in other subjects, I know you have partial exams and stuff like that. This is the thing. So uh, let's go into CISO. Uh, specifically, the slides we are going to see in this case, uh, what is Atlas TI? Atlas TI is one of the many softwares that exist to do qualitative analysis. There are many. Uh, this kind of analysis is very common, very common in advertising, communication, professional advertising, communication, etc. cetera. Um, in our case, as you see, well, uh, this is a, a German software, or at the beginning, at least, a company that, that was uh, uh, set up in, in Germany at the end of the 90s. They have developed many versions of the program we are going to see. In this case, we are going to work with uh, version number eight. Um, and it's very popular. Very popular because it's easy. 
Could I say that this uh, software is the best to do qualitative analysis? It's not. It's very good, but it's not the best. But it's, from my point of view, the, the easiest, the more um, friendly. It's, it's easy to work with, with uh, Atlas TI. It allows, another important thing is allows in, including different types of information. In our class, we are going to use only interviews. Well, these are, uh, this is a um, discourse. This is words, because this is an interview that is transcribed. We are going to analyze words, sentences of the answers of the individuals. But Atlas TI allow analyzing many other things. You can analyze sound, could be music. You can allow, uh, analyze um, videos. You can analyze images in, of, for example, advertising campaigns that has only image and some little wording, uh, a, a logo or something like that, or slogan, but in our case, we are going to analyze only words, but it can analyze many things. I, I, I said this in the previous classes. We have a study by using Atlas TI where we are analyzing uh, advertising campaigns uh, in several countries in Latin America. And we are using, we are feeding Atlas TI with both the campaign, the video of the campaign, and also the transcription. We are analyzing the video, the images. What are they showing? Which type of information? What type of, of how is people that appears in, the, in that advertisement and so on? So it's not only words, we can analyze more things. Another thing that we are going to see later that new version, newer versions have, uh, Atlas TI allows, for example, analyzing uh, Twitter, tweets. You can um, uh, search for different terms. You can search, for example, all the terms that talk about of, of a company. Imagine I say, Terra Mitica, it's a thematic part. So I'm going to try to analyze all the different tweets in the last year that have mentioned tweet, uh, Terra Mitica, for example, or many other things. So the program is going to extract from the social network the information, and we can analyze the information. Instead of having these primary document documents, our primary documents are going to be tweets. Many things can be done. Uh, it's very easy to learn. Uh, Atlas TI is very, very easy to learn. There are a lot of videos, there are a lot of tutorials, and this is also, also, also something interesting. And also, it allows uh, you to work in groups. And this is good, uh, interesting when we are doing professional things. If you are doing your final degree project, you are going to do it alone. But if you are four people working in the same project, we can share information. It's possible to work together. And this is a good, a good characteristic. I'm going to show you briefly the, um, the website of, of Atlas TI. This is the company, it's a multinational. So they, they have a lot of open positions, if, if you like uh, this kind of, uh, of, of sector to work, product. Have you seen, they offer some products of services for scientific researchers. It's my case, for example, maybe it's not your case, but they also offer specific products and services for user experience and product designers. They work directly with this kind of, kind of people. They have also some um, models for data analytics. They have some things for students and so on. And they have cases, professional cases here. And well, they have where, we, where it puts um, learn, you can find one part that is called video tutorial. So you have a lot of tutorials, not, not only in the official website that is this, but you can find any kind of uh, information on how to do things online, YouTube, there are thousands, thousands. They, of course, they are, you are going to find the ones that we are doing in class, but you're going to find many others. So the only thing you need to do is, if it's not clear my video, you can find another video. How to open a document. Open document, Atlas TI version 8. You are going to find hundreds. And also in other languages, in, in any language probably, or many of them. So this is uh, the website. I'm going to come back to the to the slides. So this is basically what I have shown you. Uh, 
Here we have the text, the interviews, what are called the primary documents. And we are going to up upload them like in this level. All our primary documents are going to appear here. And in different um, stages, we are going to do analysis in a different level. The first one is going to be called textual level, the second one conceptual, the third one organizational. And when I teach this, I like doing this or explaining this as if you were studying a subject. When you study a, study a subject and you find a book, for example, or slides or whatever, what is the first thing you do? Or me as well, we are all studying different things. The first thing I do is to underline. To underline. This, the, this kind of the first reading of something, to underline the things that you think are important. To underline many ideas. Maybe in one month, you come back to this uh, book or to these slides, you have studied a little bit, a bit more, you have learned things in class, and when, when you read the, the slides for the second time, there are many things you underline the first time that are not very useful. And there are others that are very useful, and you say, watch out, this is important. So this is what we are going to do. In the first level, in the textual level, we are going to read the interviews and we are going to underline all the ideas that we think in the first moment that could condition the user's experience or the customer experience. That is, things, for example, of my hotel that can improve the customer experience or things that we haven't done well, that are, that, that are not okay in my hotel and that can undermine my customer experience. In any case, I can underline them. There's no problem because this is like the first reading. In the second reading, I'm going to try to identify the important ones, those that I really think that are important. And in the third one, we are going to try to uh, link ideas, to relate ideas. Don't worry, because we are going to do our uh, studies. Your studies are going to be related to customer experience and customer journey map. And next Friday, Carlos Mora, that is a consultant, a professional consultant, is going to come to class to explain this concept. He's going to explain all the things you need to do that part. So this is the reason why, uh, of course, we are going to explain more in class, but it's very important attending to this professional uh, talk. It's a practice, it's one, one more practice. So, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to, to, to create a project in Atlas TI. Whenever we open Atlas TI for the first time, we are going to create a project, a new project, your project. In all the softwares, projects are called projects. Project one, project two, it makes sense. In Atlas TI, they are not called projects. They are called hermeneutic units. Hermeneutic unit is the same, exactly the same. Is our project, but the name they use is that. So our project for all of you is going to be this way. It's going to be named in this way. Hermeneutic unit underscore the name of your group. For example, Hotel Maya underscore the practice, the name, the number, the name of the practice, practice number three, for example. So in this way, anytime you, you need to submit something to me related to the to the project to the Atlas TI, you are going to have a document called hermeneutic unit, the name of your group, of your company, and the number of the practice. So in practice three you are going to have one file. In practice four you are going to have a different file and so on. Why I like doing this? So you are going to submit many practices, many documents. Because when we create a project, we are going to work on the previous project. But sometimes when you're working dealing with data, uh, documents can be corrupted. There can be problems. I'm sure you, you, it has happened to you. You are doing a, uh, something in Word and sometimes the work doesn't open anymore. It doesn't work. How to avoid the problem? If you say practice three, practice four, practice five, and one of them have any problem, you don't miss, you don't lose all the information. 
you just lose the last version. Another way, another reason to do this is because in this way you can know exactly what you did until practice three, until practice four. It's okay. So in in Atlas TI, we are going to do many things. They are going to be primary documents, the things we upload. They are going to be um, quotations. Quotations is when we underline, where there are going to be codes. It's like the second reading. Don't worry, because we are going to do practical sessions for each of them. And they are going to be memos. Memos, uh, the name is a little bit funny, but memos is what you do when you study. If you study in a book or in a slide, when you write at the at the corner of the of the of the sheet a comment. The lecturer said that this is not important. The lecturer said that this is very important. We be careful with this. All these kind of comments, we can do this kind of comment in the program by using memos, notes, like posits. We can put posits for later. So uh, now we are going to start working or we are going to see a little bit because this practice is, as I told you, very easy. I'm going to show you how to open in the software, how to open a new project. And we are going to see a little bit the, the environment. This practice is very easy. The one that is a little bit more difficult are the next ones. So now we are going to open the, the program. And uh, before the, the program opens, I'm going to show you the practice itself. This is the practice that you are going to see online. Practice number two, introduction to Atlas PI. What are we going to do in this practice or what you, you, you are supposed to do? This. You have to create your hermeneutic unit as I'm going to do in one minute. Hermeneutic unit or unit hermeneutic, Group name, practice number one, two, three, whatever. Start uploading the primary documents. What does this mean? When you finish chapter, uh, practice number one, you are going to have one transcription for the first interview. With this transcription, you can upload it to the program as I'm going to do now. And once you have uploaded the first practice, you can start trying things. I mean, uh, creating the first quotations, creating some codes. Analyzing the, or surfing a little bit in the program, trying things. This is what I need you to do. Just start playing with the program. As you see, this is very easy. This is 15 minutes, it's short. This is, but I'm going to give you two weeks until uh, March the 6th. Why? Because I want you to have a little bit more time to, to work on practice number one. It's this week, but if you if practice number zero and one it are poor, and I'm sure that in most of the groups are going to be poor, uh, use these two, week, two weeks to improve them. By yourself, you know they are poor. I have seen some pre-submissions of some groups and they are poor. So you have time, two weeks. Uh, okay, so let's go into open the software. Uh, I'm going to put it in options. I'm going to put it in English. I mean, let me see if it works. Uh -huh. Idioma, English. Yes, we are going to... Start again the program. I'm going to put the display in English. It's in Spanish, but there is will be in English for you. So the first thing we are going to do the first time is to create a new project. I click in create project and I say hermeneutic unit, for example, group one, practice three. And I create a new one. 
takes time because this computer is a little bit old. Okay, I think it's working. It's thin. So we are going to create the first one. And I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is to upload one interview. And to show you a little bit how it works. Here we are. Here we are. As you see, we have here some elements that we are going to we are going to spend the whole semester understanding this software. So we are going to do it step by step. I'm going to show you now many things, but don't worry because we are going to see things step by step. All the different elements week by week. So the first thing that we have to do, we have to feed the program. We are going to add a document. Here the first one, add a document. And as I told you, we can add many kinds of things. We are going to do it is, uh, easy because here I'm going to upload this, to open this, to show you. It allows you to open documents, PDF, any kind of documents or a specific audio documents. It could be, for example, music. We could do a study, what is the study of music, of the different uh, graphic documents, images. We can use images, we can use maps. PDF documents, we are going to uh, analyze PDF documents, basically. Text documents in general, the uh, Word documents and so on. I don't recommend using Word documents, because I told you, it's better to uh, save the Word document to, the, to a PDF and use the PDF. And video documents, there are many things we can use. We, can, we are going to use the, the easiest, in this case, the PDF documents, and we are going to find them uh, on the, on my classes, the last one, this one. I'm going to upload, as I told you, one transcription. So what I'm going to do now is just feeding the program with one transcription. If we would have 10 transcription, as you see now, this is the transcription, and here the program is saying there is one document. You can see there are no codes, memos, all the things doesn't exist yet. But there is one document. When you do uh, the last version of your project, there are going to be three documents. Two are going to be interviews and one a focus group. Now it's only one. So our project has one document. The first thing you need to do is to save the file because we have uploaded a document. And if we save, we are keeping this, this file in the project. So. Now, there are many things we can do. We can save and merge many things that we are going to see later or in other days. And we can do many things. We can write new code, new memos, whatever, quotations. And I told you, if you remember, I told you there were different levels, textual, conceptual, organizational. And the easiest thing to do is to underline this first reading of a text. These underlines are called quotations. <coughs> Quotes or quotations. This is the first thing and the only thing we are going to do today. Just to, to show you how to, to quote, to write, to underline. So imagine I'm reading this interview and I say, okay, for example, if we are talking about a rural, a rural hotel, the location of the rural hotel can influence the experience of the individual. It's not the same being in a rural hotel next to Alicante, this nice countryside we have, dry countryside, than being in a rural hotel in the, in the real countryside, in the actual countryside. So in this case, when we read, for example, pues estamos, we are in Alcoy. Alcoy is a city that is in the mountain. So we can, I can think that this idea that they are located in Alcoy could be important. So I'm going to underline this. What I do is to underline this and click on the right button 
create free quotation. And the only thing that I have done is to show for the next step that this idea I think could be important. And here it appears one, one uh, mark saying, look this, this sentence because maybe there is something interesting. It says, the place, our, nuestra parcela tiene 84.000 metros de cuadrados en plena naturaleza. This is the size, the size of the place where they are located, of the rural hotel, 84,000 square meters. This could be important, of course. It's not the same going to a place that is very small and very old than a place that is open, maybe with uh, horses and whatever. So what we do is to underline different sentences that we think could be important. Just keep on reading, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to write, uh, to underline all of them. But imagine, in a transcription like this, that this is like three pages or four pages, it's common to underline, for example, to create 15, 20 quotations, to underline 15, 20 ideas. Makes sense. So if we do that and we save it for the next time, when we read it for the next time, we can try to see if some of these fit in one factor that affects um, customer experience. Carlos is going to explain you on Friday uh, what are the factors that affect the customer experience in, a, in services, and also what are the different steps in the customer journey map. So you need to think of these ideas when, or, or this process, when you follow the next class with Carlos. For the next classes, text analysis, conceptual, I'm going to use the things you are going to learn with Carlos. I'm going to work on Carlos idea. OK? But for the first practice, it's just trying. There are many things we can do. For example, let me see if it works. Uh, there are different tools, the typical tools when we are doing um, import, export, for example, we can analyze. One thing that is interesting is co-occurrence. We can analyze if one type of person, for example, if the factors that affect customer experience are different from, from men, to or between male and female. We can use co-occurrence. We can fix the gender and we can see there are differences. We can do many things. We can do that, for example, taking into account that uh, the variable nationality, if they are Spanish compared to foreign people. There are many things we can do. I, apart from that, import, export, as I told you, we can extract the information from Twitter automatically. We are not going to do it. Because we are we are focusing only in our interviews and focus group, but for other thing you do, imagine you are doing your final project in Greece or the the, the vast the, the great Greek group, and you want to do this, you can do it. Um, and there are many many other tools. For for instance, one one thing we are going to see in organizational analysis in data visualization is something, for example, the word clouds. If we have an interview, I could create a word cloud to see what are the words that the person repeats more. Word cloud, nube de palabras in Spanish. If I click here in word cloud, I'm sure you have seen this in your life, kind of word clouds. But there is a problem of this word cloud. This is a simple one. As you see, there are words que, de, para. There are words that has no meaning. When we create a word cloud, we need to eliminate words. We need to create a word cloud telling the program to omit articles or this kind of which, determinants, and so on, to focus only on word. In this, do, by doing this, we can see specifically what is going on. Don't worry. This is for, just for you to see. We are going to see practice number eight, I, I, remember, I think, where I'm going to explain you how to do a word cloud, um, how to polish the results. So, um, more things. Let me see, word list. Well, there are many things. 
So um, this is the software. When you finish doing all, underlying all the sentences that could be interesting from your point of view to explain customer experience, positive things and also negative things, when you underline all of them, the only thing you need to do is to say and send me your send me your presentation. When uh, you do the first version, practice number three, and you reopen the program in one week, you are going to see the document. The document, the program find your the document in your computer, the last version. So this is why I want you to work on practice number three, three for example, to open and to uh, the save it when you are doing practice number four with a new name. The same name, practice four. So we know you are going to keep all the different versions here in your project. It's not difficult, as I told you, doing qualitative analysis with software is not difficult. The most difficult thing is doing the qualitative analysis, not the software part. Doing the design, doing the interviews, all, all this kind of finding sources, this is the most costly thing. So I hope you have understood at least the video. And if you have any question, we can, I'm going to close the, the video and you can ask me the question.